Good morning, friends. I suppose for some of you it might be afternoon already. Um, how are you today? It is Wednesday, and uh, confession, we're not exactly going to do card Yahtzee today. I needed to do more Valentine projects, and so I didn't even check to see if I could incorporate Valentine's into the dice. I feel like I probably could have, but I did not take the time to do it. So I apologize for that. Um, and I keep remembering at this point that I still need to add posts in the Facebook group pages so that you have a place to share your creations and draw for prizes. Because otherwise, we're just drawing for prizes when you like, comment, and share my video, which is awesome. But um, I'd like to see what you're making as well. So, um, and you can see that my, my camera, this is my, my camera that shines on my workspace and it continues to creep down. Um, I don't think I'm shrinking. I think that my, the arm of this little guy keeps just tilting farther and farther over. And, um, and I don't necessarily see it until I'm right here and there's no time to do anything about it. So anyway, um, Valentine's it's coming up fast. And I have a couple of things that I want to do. So first, we're going to case the catalog today. Let me switch the camera down so that you can see. Okay, so this sweet little stamp set, this nuts and bolts, I think is just precious. It's just, just precious. Um, and I'm going to case this treat box today. I told you before that I wanted to stamp on these boxes like I had stamped on the the co mini coffee cups at Christmas time. And of course, the, the boxes will be even easier because they're flat. So, um, but the coloring, we're going to do um, a little more shading and even add some rust to our little robots. This is super cute. Um, making a, a mask or a stencil from this um, punched out shape. I love, I love that. So I'm going to have to try that at some point. Don't know that I'm going to do that today because the other thing, I was in Hobby Lobby over the holidays. Uh, I know I actually went into a store, physically walked into a store, which um, is a shock to many of us, myself included. But I do this once a year with my sister-in-law and I found... this cute little, I'll show it up here and then I'll show it down here. I found this little bubble gum machine and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so stinking cute. Now mine is filled with jelly beans because I think I can resist those. I don't chew gum, so I could have done bubble gum, but um, anyway, I thought the jelly beans were really colorful and I like them. So, but I thought that needs a, that might be fun to make a tag or something for it. And um, and you can even go back to Hobby Lobby and get more of them and give them as fun little gifts, you know, doing something with this, make the tag. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that looks like yet, but I am going to use this at some point. Um, but today we're going to start by casing this little project with the box. And I've already misplaced my box. So here's the stamp set, Nuts and Bolts. And we are, as you know, Hope and I are hosting a stamp camp in a couple of weeks, the 22nd. And this Nuts and Bolts is an add-on class. The main part of the stamp camp is gonna use Sweet Conversations, but we have an add-on class that Hope has designed using the Nuts and Bolts. And um, I will be sharing that today. All right, so here's where I was playing a little bit with this guy and you know adding some rust with the coloring. But first, let's let's stamp all over this and um, and so we get some now. Let's figure out what's the front and what's the back. So let me grab the one that I've already gotten done so that we have a bit of a look. Okay, so what works out to be the front is going to be this guy and. I'm going to turn him sideways because this is going to go more horizontal than vertical. But you can see these are just a cute, cute, cute little boxes. A gift card will fit in here. Some chocolate would fit in there. Of course, I can't put chocolate in mine or I will eat the chocolate. 
And um, then we've got some robots, different robots to choose. I'm going to work with this little squatty one that they worked with in the catalog simply because it's a little smaller. All right. And I've got my heart punch here because I'm thinking instead of a, a little cut out rectangular tag, we might try a heart and see if we like that. All right, so I've already got my image on a block and I'm gonna stamp in memento black, although basic gray, you could also stamp in that. Um, it'd be super cute too. All right, so I'm gonna start with the one that is gonna be most visible and that is this guy right down here. I apologize if I get my head in this. Too cute. And then, now I have to decide if I, if I let one hang over here, am I gonna let it run all over? Might as well. So he'll end up being like there. So you can see it's just stamping really well. And then let's do one like so. And then let's get another one up here. didn't really want to look, make them look like they needed to be right on top of each other. Now, um, I'll go ahead and stamp the back of these two. Let's put one here. You know, and you could highlight and color only, you know, one or two. Make it stand out more. because the coloring is the part that's going to take the most time. And then do I want, you can see that guy was a little off. Okay, so that's got a bunch of them stamped. I'm going to set that over. The other thing that I want to do today is to take this sweet little box. It is an amazing size box. Um, and I want to make a Valentine's version of this. Um, so I've got it out on my desk to, to play with it as well. All right, so the colors I have in my blends. I have light and dark smoky slate. I have light Cajun craze and I have a color lifter. And I'm going to start. Should I start with one um, that isn't going to be as visible, or should we start with one that is? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? So I'm going to start with, you, now you've got several choices when you color. You can, because it's laying down the color, layers of the color that help the blending of it. So you could start and do like an all over color of your all over layer of your light color and then come in with your accents or you can start with your accents, your dark colors and then pull in the light. Now this is a pretty small space, which is great because it means it's easier to work quickly. Um, but you know, it's that you know which 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 comes first. Which do I want to do first, the chicken or the egg? All right, I'm going to be brave, and I'm going to start with my dark smoky slate, and and I'm going to kind of come in a place that isn't going to be quite as obvious. And do just a few. So I'm going to do a few dark stripes. And then with them, 
I'm going to add some of the Cajun craze. So I'm going to add a little bit there, and one here, and here, and then here, and here. And now I'm going to come back with the light color and kind of blend that a little bit. Now when you want something to blend, you want to work quickly, you know, not at a dead run, but if you want the colors to blend together, then you want to work quickly. Alcohol is going to dry. Um, going to dry quickly. All right, um, and then let's do his little, his little hand here. Add a little rust. This little guy, he's just a mess of rust, isn't he? I'm kind of following a model that Hope did when she created her cards for this class, kind of following the coloring that she did because I love it so stinking much. Um, and she just did some dots of the dark color there and she did some more Cajun craze over here along these stripes and then kind of only did the dark at the edge and then blend those together oh sorry my head is way in the way I haven't seen anybody pop on just yet I think it will ding at me when you do um, so after this finishes it gets uploaded to YouTube and then put on my blog and sent out in an email the next day. So you can subscribe to that at michellesalcho.com. This is um, part, this nuts and bolts uh, add-on class is part of the stamp camp that is on the 22nd of January that we're hosting. And I got this a little dark in a couple of spots. I'm just going to take my color lifter and lift some of that out. Actually is pushing it around. Um, where else do I need to go with him? Uh, let's go up here to his little helmet. I'm just going to add a little bit here and here. And then again along the edge some dark and some Cajun craze this is fun to do with um, our animal stamps as well And if you want more definition, then you come back in after your ink has dried and add more. Just continue to layer down the color.
Now it would be a very long video if you all stayed with me while I colored all of these robots. So we probably won't color them all. I have a lesson on coloring to take that's working with these rounded shapes and I need to finish that before I get too far into coloring this little guy because he is round. And with your shading, you can portray those kinds of things nicely. One of my friends actually holds a couple of these colors in her hand so that she can switch back and forth in the same hand that she's coloring with. I can't do that. So I'm curious, what else do you see using these little treat boxes for? I think he's pretty cute. Um, I'm not sure that I've gotten his shading the way I want it, but I do like the rust that I've added to him. All right, so let's come over and work on this guy that is in the, uh, is he in the spotlight? Kind of is, isn't he? All right. I think I first started really coloring when the Magnolia stamp set came out a few years ago. One of the techniques that we did with it was to actually um, color lightly some areas with the petal pink blend and then brush it or wash it out with the color lifter. And it's really softened the look. He is pretty cute. All right. And it's fun just adding these little random rust spots. So the sample in the catalog looks like they've just colored with smoky slate, light and dark, um, but making him a little rusty just adds to him. I think it does anyway. actually looking at this you know, I love I love what Hope did and oh my gosh those are so pretty Coloring and talking don't always work well for me. I'm going to try and do that together. Um, in the class on the 22nd, this nuts and bolts class, we're actually going to include the smoky slate blends in the class. And of course, if you already have that, it's always nice to have an extra on hand because when they, they dry up, they do dry up and they need to be replaced. But if you wanted to substitute for another set of blends that you don't have perhaps um, or another product of equal value, then you can do that as well. I lost track of where I was. Yeah, 
go that way with the light. Yeah, I really went over the reverse my process there didn't I by adding in that light first and I think you can probably see how the adding the gray just really pulls out of course these are still a little wet they may not show up just yet and if you look at this one you can see how we we've added some character, some rust, but there's not it's not noticeably Cajun craze. So there he is. Now let's get his let's get his little helmet. He is really cute. And this time I'm back to the way I typically color, bringing in some dark first and then adding in the light to blend it. I'm not worried about any bleed through. I think this is probably thick enough that it's not going to, but even if it did, it's not going to show once we seal it up because it's only the lid of the box that opens. Just a little and he's looking. He's looking pretty intense here. Pretty dark. I feel like he needs a mouth somewhere. Okay. All right. Let's tackle this guy. Maybe I'm going to come in with Cajun Craze first. I don't know. Just really light right there and then here. Here. I don't know that I'm entirely comfortable with this three color coloring. So I've skipped the dark smoky slate entirely on this go round. But it is definitely needed. So I guess if people are just joining and I'm not talking while I'm coloring, they're wondering, what the heck?
not liking the way he's turning out. So let's try that again. The rest is really not. Just the rest is not really a shadowed look. So blend it and then add some dark. That's the dark nuts. Should set them down in separate places on my table. Oh, I kind of like the way that turned out. Okay. Let's try that again. Come in with this. And then come behind it with the dark. And then the light. Okay, again, and then the dark, here's the dark, I'm not exactly sure why. I think that's my favorite. Am I just getting the hang of this more? Or is that just the better way to attack it? I think I should color his little, his other shoe, huh? Add some dark on top of it. Okay. So you can see if you could hold all of these in your hand. that you'd be able to change them up faster. Okay, so there's three of them colored. Let's take a look at putting this box together. Oh, I smeared because, yeah. Um, let's put this box together, do the tag, and then see, see if we like this heart. All right, so. I can always come back and color afterwards. And like I said, it did not bleed through. I didn't think it would. Now I want to be careful because this part is probably not going to dry in the memento. So you might want to mask that off with, um, with a post-it note so that you don't do what I did because I got ink here, got it on my fingers, and then I transferred it to a place or two here. Okay, so I'm gonna let this tuck in like this, and then it's gonna go there. So I'm gonna grab my, take my pick tool, take your pick tool, It's funny to say, grab my take your pick tool. Okay, there's that side. That side. And oh my. 
goodness, I did transfer more of it, didn't I? Oh, well, that's a little distressing. Shoot. Well, this one will have to be my test box, won't it? I could splatter some black, you know, to disguise that. So let's let's take a look at that. Or let's just come in with the basic gray and splatter it. And that would hide some of that. It looks it doesn't look smudged at all anymore because I just added that to it. So it's an opportunity, wasn't it? All right, so in I've got a piece of pool party. I'm gonna punch this. We have a punch duo of hearts. Punch that out and then grab back the black and another block. I need to keep wipes handy. Um, so I have nuts and bolts about you. Let's see if that will fit on the heart. We'll stamp it twice. We'll go ahead and stamp it on another another piece and cut it out. And that way we can di decide which one we like better. Oh, I think it'll just fit. Pretty cute like that. Then let's do it on a piece. And then I'll cut that out and we'll see which way we like better. I love Pool Party and Coastal Cabana with red. So we've got some red ribbon that we're going to use to add a bow. I feel like that should be a little more narrow. I am not looking at the time. I did just notice that I'm 33 minutes, but I think when I watch the clock too closely, I get really nervous and it doesn't go well. So this is what I would normally do. Okay, I would, and I, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do it, I'm going to hide my joining with my tag. So, so we've got that with a bow and we have this. And I think that needs to be a little smaller, but I might have to make both. I like to send little treats to my nieces and my nephew. So he's, he's pretty cute. All right. There's nobody there to tell me whether you like the heart or not. I must have some competition for your attention at 11 o'clock. This is the reason that I don't do this this way. I have a hard time keeping the tension. Okay. So scoop that over. I think I like the heart. They're both fine, but I do. I like the heart. Why not use the heart? This is all about Valentine's Day, right? And then you could add a couple of right red, um, little red rhinestones, maybe. Would be so super cute. All right, so he needs to be colored. And you know what? I like the splattered look too. So learned quite a bit on this. So again, the products that uh, the blends that I used were the light and dark smoky slate, the light Cajun craze, and I'll use a little bit of the color lifter. Our stamp set is the nuts and bolts. 
And these little treat boxes, I am loving these little treat boxes, so let me find them for you too. They are on page, so page nine, they're right here, and you get 10 boxes for $10. So a dollar a box, add some chocolate, a little gift card in there, and you have a super cute little Valentine's treat. Um, this would be great to give like with with a tip for your hairdresser or um, your nail tech. I've got to go get mine done. Um, so pretty inexpensive way to give out a little treat and brighten someone's day. I might leave this in the mailbox for my mail carrier. That would be pretty. That'd be a nice little thank you for them. So something really small. Um, of course, you know, if it's chocolate, it has to come in and out of this house really fast or I'll eat it. So can't have that. Um, thanks for being here today and helping me color. I hope that you like the way this turned out. I, I love this little stamp set and um, I love stamping on these kinds of, of boxes and those mini coffee cups. So anyway, have a great Wednesday. Um, I'll be back next Thursday with my online card class and that is free with a purchase. So if you purchase $35, you're going to get the card kit for free. And if you purchase 50, you're going to get the card kit, an embellishment and a celebration selection. So have a great day, everybody. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.